thank you everyone for joining us this evening for assistive technology and transition for all ages webinar on wednesday november 8th at 6 30 our guest presenter presenter fatima from lvcil our disclaimer the arc of lehigh northampton County's advocacy department does not employ lawyers nor provide legal advice. This training or any others provided by the ARC's advocacy department does not constitute or imply the endorsement, recommendations, or favorings of the providing party or any other employees or contractors acting, acting on its behalf. This webinar is being provided for educational and, and informative purposes only. Thank you. And with that, I would like to introduce Fatima, a coordinator of accessibility and related programs from LVCIL, speaking on behalf of Tech Owl Institutions on Disabilities at Temple Universities. Thank you, and the Zoom is yours. Thank you, Cody. Um, I am here today from Tech Owl, as, Katie had, um, as Cody had stated. Um, and we'll be going over tools and technology for people with disabilities, specifically um, ATN transition today. I am your host, Fatima Nabavi, and I'm your presenter today. Um, I do go by she, her pronouns. Um, I do have dark hair that's a little bit more than just past my shoulders. Um, as you can see in the image that's on the screen, um, I am an Eagles fan. Um, I did grow up in the Lehigh Valley in Bethlehem. Um, I'm a former special educator. Um, I'm happy to be working for this wonderful nonprofit that is Lehigh Valley Center for Independent Living, providing services, free services to people with disabilities. Um, and I also enjoy working with Tech Owl programs. I am a um, alumnus of Temple, so um, my life has come full circle <laughs> um, since I started um, in this role at LVCIL. This workshop is designed to help you. Um, we want you to be able to describe assistive technology options for a variety of people with disabilities. Um, we I would love for you to be able to, um, with your teams, compare light, mid, and high-tech assistive technology options. We do cover a range um, within this workshop. We, um, we like to say that assistive technology exists on a spectrum, so hopefully that will hit home today. Um, we will do a brief overview of the set framework. Um, and we will help you consider funding for AT during transitions. Um, at LVCIL, we like to say all of life is a transition. Um, and this area is really the key to AT and transition, knowing your funding options um, outside of school age. And also, um, we will help you learn to utilize the Tech Owl programs, including the Lending Library and other resources. Um, it's very important to know about these federally funded assistive technology programs in your state, including TechAL and PATF, Pennsylvania Assistive Technology Foundation. Um, I'll do a bit of a review of PATF as well. So just curious, um, would love to get to know the audience a little bit more. I know now um, that um, the majority of you are professionals or um, family members of um, people with disabilities. Um, if you could share your location, um, perhaps your role again, um, and just for fun, uh, just to get in the, you know, in the spirit of assistive technology today, if you could share your favorite helpful app that you use on your mobile device. I'll tell you, I use um, timers all the time on my, <clears throat> on my phone, something really simple that has helped me through, you know, just managing my time and, you know, that uh, executive functioning piece um, for sure. Some people might use calculators on their phone. That's something simple that, you know, just nice to, to have always ready on hand. We think back to the days of, you know, when we weren't using mobile phones <laughs> so much. 
so much we take for granted now. Okay. Snap Pro, Speechify, that's great. And then notes function a lot. That's wonderful. The notes function on um, on iOS devices is wonderful. Now you can scan documents right into your phone, um, read printed materials. Amazing. Quick cal calculator. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing out. So just a little bit more about Tech Owl um, before I get started on the, the meat of, of our presentation. Um, Tech Owl stands for, the OWL stands for Our Whole Lives. Um, you know, technology um, for people with disabilities is something that, you know, can be a tool that supports them through, you know, their independence throughout their lives. You know, you never know when there might be a tool that you, you might need as you, you know, as you age even um, a lot of times I'm you know doing presentations for seniors and and it's amazing what comes up in those discussions. Um, Tech Out is part of the Institute on Disabilities at Temple University um, and we are um, Pennsylvania's AT Act program. Um, we're doing a lot of the one-to-one -one support um, and working with teams you know more hands-on um, as opposed to some of the other um, two of the other AT Act programs. Um, everything is funded through the Federal Assistive Technology Act. Um, there are nine regional centers providing many of the services to residents in Pennsylvania um, in their corresponding regions. LVCIL is um, Lehigh and Northampton County's uh, assistive, assistive Technology Resource Center. Uh, we serve for this program, though LVCIL is for Lehigh and Northampton, um, for our accessibility um, department and with assistive technology, we're serving seven counties. So it's Lehigh, Northampton, Carbon, Monroe, Schuylkill, Berks, um, and Luzerne. I also have a link there that you'll be able to access um, when you receive the uh, PDF of the presentation um, if you're curious about um, AT centers in other states. ET, program, ET programs in other states. So when we're thinking about assistive technology devices, um, we think about two parts of, um, of AT, looking into AT for an individual. We think about the dev devices and the support. Um, the definition of AT devices um, as defined by the AT Act of 1998, um, Assistive technology is, technology is any item, piece of equipment, or product system, whether acquired commercially, modified, or customized, that is used to increase, maintain, or improve the functional capacities of individuals with disabilities. Um, so because this is quite a mouthful, um, you know, throughout the tr training, we'll make sure that you, um, you understand, you know, what that all means. Um, we like to say basically it's tools that make life easier, safer, and help people um, be more independent throughout all environments. Um, assistive technology services are any services that directly assist a person with a disability or the person's family in the selection, acquisition, or use of an assistive technology device. This could include uh, scheduling and coordination of therapists and vendors, evaluation of need, acquisition of equipment, training needed for participants and team members, adaptations and modifications to an environment or to, a, to an existing device, and also the maintenance, repair, or replacement of a tool. So all of these are, are things that TechOwl is considering when we're working with, with individuals and teams as well. So when considering assistive technology, um, we like to call this the discovery piece. Um, it's of course very important because as we know, equipment can be very expensive. So we must discover what's out there and what is the best fit before making a decision. Um, a great place to start at any point of considering AT is what is already working. Um, and we ask these questions, what do you want or need to do 
Uh, we think about the functional need versus the diagnosis of the individual. Um, and what routines and activities are working, which ones are not. Um, as with anything, we're just considering the individual in their environment and how they're managing currently, you know, thinking about that baseline information and then, um, then building from there. We're going to take a, a look at some images here and just wondering what your thoughts are. Is that assistive technology? And of course, this is an AP presentation, so <laughs> the answer might seem pretty obvious, but, you know, just to get us thinking about what could, you know, what could deem these assistive technology for an individual. If you have any thoughts, feel free to drop those in the chat. I'll give you a couple seconds. Just a yes or a no answer would be fine as well. Do you have any brave souls? <laughs> so if you thought yes, you're correct. Um, so there are a few ways straws can be assisted technology that, you know, perhaps I didn't even, you know, think of all of them, but um, think about a person who can't hold a cup. Um, the straw is allowing them to access their, you know, their beverage. For someone who can't hold something too hot and cold for those sensory needs, um, the straw might be, you know, very important to them um, and to their well-being. Um, also, for someone who has a swallowing disorder, um, the straw can be extremely helpful for that as well and necessary. Let's take a look at another one, see what our thoughts are. What do you think of a of a fidget spinner? And when you're thinking of whether it's AP, also think about the reason for it. Yeah, I saw some nods from, from who I'm seeing there in the audience, but um, yes, a fidget spinner can be considered AP, um, you know, to help someone focus while learning, very key for individuals with those sensory needs, um, to help someone stay calm, um, that's also very important. Um, AP is anything that helps a person with a disability do something easier, safer, or more independently. So a fidget might help someone learn, and that's what makes it assistive technology. Ah, the KitchenAid. I don't have one, but I've always wanted one. I've never had a kitchen large enough where I could keep it out on a counter. So I don't, I don't imagine myself taking that big hunk of equipment, you know, in and out of my cabinet. So I use a hand mixer. So any thoughts about this? Has anybody ever seen this used? Wonderful. Yeah, they're great. I know I've used I've used the kitchen needs um my sister had has had. I love it. Very helpful. So imagine how how helpful they are for any individual really. Um, you know, sometimes it can become very cumbersome depending on what kind of dough you're working with. To have to need dough um, but for someone who can't need dough um, this could be helpful for some people this might not be um, this is a technology if they don't have a disability but they might need it um, this could allow an individual to bake independently where if that tool wasn't available they wouldn't be able to, to you know take part in that fun activity of baking you know so when you take a look at what's available in all environments, um, you know, that's kind of what we're looking to do here. Um, it never fails to amaze me um, what you might find could be simple solutions to AP needs. Think of materials that might be able to be mixed with a KitchenAid. You know, think about clay in, a, in an art classroom.
So as I had stated um, before, assistive technology is a continuum. Um, so I will touch upon definitions of the levels of um, AT on the continuum and provide an example or two for each. Um, I'll be happy to hear from you in this section as well. The various levels are hard to define um, often, but it's very helpful to think of it as a continuum when you're considering you know, what's cost effective, um, but will provide for optimal independence for the individual. So light tech. Um, light tech is any tool or device um, that's often free or inexpensive, readily available, doesn't require training um, or ongoing support. Um, as, and is not overly complex. So something as simple as a pencil grip that's in the picture could be considered light tech options that support a, an individual with fine motor um, challenges. Are there any other ideas of, of what, what might be considered light tech? Slant board, absolutely. You can buy a slant board as a slant board, or I've seen some creative ways of having a slant board in a classroom with binders and clipboards. Absolutely. And I'll, I'll give you some examples later in the presentation when we're talking about um, our 3D printer program as well, and, and even some things in the, H, uh, the lending library. Thank you, Lindsay. Mid-tech, um, mid-tech is um, any device that's low cost or moderately priced at least. Um, mid-tech may require some training um, and ongoing support and can be somewhat sophisticated at times. Um, here's an example of, um, of a mid-tech uh, device, an ergonomic keyboard. Um, you know, these may be devices that are just adaptations in design of typically used equipment. Any other thoughts about mid-tech? And once again, you'll see some more examples of that coming up. Some of those more simple um, communication devices like GoTalk might might be considered mid-tech or you know switch the simple switch switches to operate devices. And then finally, high tech. Um, high tech can be expensive. Um, we want to consider the low tech and mid tech options before we think about high tech. Um, they may require expensive training and ongoing support, and are usually more sophisticated. So we're going to see an image here of very high tech um, system here. All of these things are working together for Stephen Hawking and his power wheelchair and high tech communication device using um, eye gaze to operate com communication device. Any other ideas of high tech? Sometimes this is where people start, and that's kind of the whole point is to, to get teams thinking of, of those, like I said, lower tech and mid tech items before getting into high tech. Now let's look at an example of how and what a team might consider, um, you know, when thinking of, you know, a function that, you know, that we're looking to be met. Um, so, for instance, fall prevention. Um, you might think about, you know, a couch cane to begin with, um, you know, grab bars in, in the bathroom. Um, we have as mid tech, the power seat assist. And these are all items that are available in the lending library. Um, a personal emergency response system um, could be something that someone with, you know, fall risk would need. Um, and then high tech and Apple Watch um, can be very useful um, for a person who has, you know, the risk of falling.
So some final thoughts on the AT continuum. Um, at TechAL and amongst teams, it's important that we try to provide people with the most appropriate tool, regardless of where it lands on the continuum. Um, pictured here, you see all different kinds of headphones, noise cancellation headphones, et cetera, um, representing different parts of the AT continuum. Now let's um, take a look at examples of assistive technology for specific needs. Um, and once again, um, these slides are featuring tools from the Assistive Technology Lending Library, available at techalpa.org. Here we have some options for moving and controlling the environment. Um, let me just get everything up here on screen. Um, you'll see the guided hands here at the top. Um, helping somebody access, you know, writing in the learning environment or just in any environment. Um, smart home technology um, can support a person with moving and controlling their environment. Um, environmental controls are, are huge and really can go anywhere from just having, you know, one device, the main, you know, Alexa or Google device, Google home device. Um, to having a whole system of smart smart home technology. Um, the OB dining robot um, can help a person with motor functioning needs to eat and be independent. Um, we have an image of a man using a, an Xbox adaptive controller. Um, and an automatic nail clipper, and a liftware level spoon. Tools for people with hearing related um, disabilities. We have various options. The pocket talker, um, the amplified doorbell, the listening system, um, we do have different options of bed shakers um, and alarm clocks, the Be Here personal amplifier, and uh, even bone conduction headphones um, are available in the lending library as well. Vision tools. Um, once again, we have um, some low tech. Uh, examples here and some more high-tech options. Um, the Braille Sense for note-taking, uh, video magnifier. Um, there are so many options for magnifiers and it's really important that you explore those. You know, what, what makes the most sense for individuals? Are they gonna be in a fixed um, setting, a, a fixed position or is it something that they wanna carry around with them? Will they be able to, you know, pull it out when they need it? We have the OrCam My Eye, um, which helps people to explore their environment, to access their environment. Um, the white cane at the top right there. We have a Braille labeler and Envision glasses. These are um, glasses that help people um, access their environment, read their environment. Um, and then, of course, we do have, um, you know, we do like to explore options with apps that might be able to um, be downloaded even for free. Um, Microsoft Seeing AI is a free application um, that anybody can try out. I have it on my phone, and it's just really cool to explore with individuals with vision needs, um, and at times I've even used it for people who have, you know, uh, reading um, related disabilities. So let's take a look at seeing AI. My take on life is that life is definitely there for the taking. What you put in is what you'll get out. Two things important to me in life are family and music. They both play a huge part in my life. Technology allows me to be my own one-man band. 
I try to be as independent as I can, and uh, the way that I do that mostly is uh, with low tech, which is a white cane, and high tech, which is a phone. Seeing AI. Seeing AI is one of the biggest deals in technology, I think, at the moment for visually impaired users. It's an app that you can read almost anything, anywhere, with it. Kilburn High Road. Fashion. Workspace. Mayonnaise. It has a multitude of functions, and they all work together to produce something that you can use whenever you need it. It might even be considered to be a Swiss army knife of apps. Of all the parts of seeing AI, I really do think short text is the biggest of the game changes. Northwest 6. Because I've never seen anything like that in any other app before. And I like being in the back of cabs or in buses and pointing it out the window and seeing what I pass on the way to places. One of the greatest things about short text for me is that if there's no one else in the house, I can sort the post into who's who. Mrs. K. Louis. Mrs. Kirsten Louis. So I don't open my wife's post and she doesn't get cross with me. Oh, well, Andre. Good. My man, Alex. Good. 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 £20. That's really cool. Currency is a very useful channel because sometimes it's very difficult to know what notes actually are. So with currency, I can detect that straight away. £5. Job done. 2025. Well done. Scene preview. Scene is actually really cool. It's quite descriptive, really. Processing. A store filled with lots of different types of fruit. But I think that's pretty amazing. In my view, one of the best parts of seeing AI is the ability to read pictures from social media. Because so many times someone will send me a picture of something that I cannot understand. So I will share that picture to seeing AI. Scene. Probably a group of people sitting on a bench in a park. And then I'll get a description of what it is. Person. Eight-year-old boy with black hair looking happy. Seven-year-old girl with brown hair looking disgusted. <laughs> and it's changed how I can view social media. It feels like I can participate. Like, reply. Far more than I could before. Thank you for sharing. Handwriting preview. With handwriting channel, I was actually able to read a card from a family member last year. That's the first time I'd actually been able to do that without help. Dear Dad. Oh, Alice very worked. Good. We can tell if Jake's been writing well, if the handwriting tab can recognize it. That's good proof, really. We love you, Daddy. X, 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 X. <laughs> We've got lots of X's. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> the effect of having Sing AI to hand all the time is like having somebody who can see in your pocket. 34-year-old man with a beard wearing a hat looking happy. <laughs> Why not? There is so much more that I can do now that I couldn't before. You've grown up. I used to be nice. I think Sing AI really is a huge technological step down the road and I hope that we can continue down a road like this for many years to come. Um, so my team loves the feature that it can read, read people, read the environment. Um, you know, often, you know, it's reading me as like a 40 year old, <laughs> which I don't love, but you know, I'm getting there. So, um, but yeah, it reads currency. Um, I have, people I work with who are using it to read their mail and they've never, you know, they've lived, um, I know somebody who's lived probably more than 20 years um, until now, what hasn't been able to do that and she can do that now. Um, those smart glasses that I showed um, before, I'm just like hoping that someday those will be covered by insurance and a person might be able to just have those right on their, <laughs> right on their face and not have to be navigating with a phone, but um, you know, uh, it's hopeful <laughs> that you know these things exist. Um, if you're interested in downloading and trying out seeing AI, if you think it could um, help you or family member or somebody that you work for, um, seeing AI is free now uh, for now. So that's the one that I usually that's my go-to that I recommend for people. There are other um, other apps like it, but this one's free. Um, you can program it to be able to read, you know, individuals that you know. So it can tell you that, you know, your friend walked in the room kind of thing. So that's pretty cool. And then, um, sorry, Envision AI is a similar app. It has all the same functions, and that's for Android. Um, and here's just some examples of sensory tools. Um, we have the liquid motion bubblers. Those are available in the library. Compression vests. 
um, noise canceling headphones, fidgets, um, a weighted lap pad. Um, and these things come in, in so many different varieties. So um, it really is something, you know, a discovery process for when you're working with individuals or you have, you know, a, a, a child, um, you want to try everything that you can. So we love to offer these, these devices from the library for people to try out. Communication tools, um, we have the GoTalk 4. Um, often people are using that to start off um, when you're just getting started with um, trying out AAC for the young ones. Um, we have an electrolarynx um, for individuals who have those speech needs. Uh, Accent 1400 speech generation generating device. Um, an iPad with Skyle Eye Tracker, um, more complex system there. The Quick Talker, uh, it's a multi-message communication device. Um, and the Big Mac single message speech gener generating device. And of course, um, you know, these are just a few of, of the options. There are so many awesome tools out there to consider. Um, you know, Pro Low Code to Go is the big one that we see, and of course, the, all the varieties of GoTalk, um, GoTalk Pro, and um, something to consider that there's this wide range available, um, and you never know what's going to work in in any given environment until you try it out. So, when teams are thinking about um, all of these different um, devices and what's going to work for an individual. Um, we are often using the set framework. Um, it is just a framework um, that is part of a process. Um, the four-part model is intended to promote collaborative, collaborative de decision-making in all phases of uh, assistive technology service design and delivery from consideration through implementation and evaluation of effectiveness. Um, and Joy Zabala, she always liked to say that those four things, um, student environments, tasks, and tools, which is that four, those four parts of the model um, doesn't imply order. So. Um, the team is constantly working through all of those things and, um, you know, you, you do it based on what makes sense for the individual. Um, it helps guide the evaluation process with feature matching, making sure that you're thinking about the individual and, you know, considering, you know, where they're at and what would make the most sense. Um, and then, um, you know, considering the assignment of responsibilities with the team you know, who's going to take on what task, you know, is there somebody else that you can bring into the team to support um, support the selection? And then of course, data collection. Um, and then, you know, reset, just, you know, often, um, you know, people are discussing these, these things at, at annual IEP meetings with that framework and revisiting, um, you know, what thinking about what's working, um, and these things can change um, as you know, as the individual is getting more comfortable with devices. You might need to consider, um, you know, other options or moving forward with more complex, um, for instance, communication tools. Um, and you can revisit the set framework as as often as possible. Um, if the student's abilities have changed significantly or if their environment or academic expectations, for instance, have changed, um, then, you know, and they're different than they were originally, um, you might not need to start from scratch, but you can rather just amend and revisit the portions that are relevant. Um, so who's on the team? Of course, the assistive technology user, um, the family, teachers, um, occupational therapists, physical therapists. Um, speech and language pathologist, um, and an assistive technology specialist, and classroom aides. Um, TechOwl has, um, has worked with teams in schools 
Um, and we've, we've done Zoom meetings where we're all working together to figure out, especially if the person is using, you know, our lending library to try out items, um, this is an option as well. And this is just how it's all laid out um, for everyone to be able to access and just a great tool to, to maintain for all, uh, for all of the team members. Funding of assistance te assistive technology. Um, I'm just gonna do an overview. Um, I don't get into the nitty gritty details, um, but I do just wanna make sure you know where to go when you have questions um, for sure. Um, and why, you know, why is it so important to understand funding of assistive technology? Um, it allows individuals to advocate for themselves, for family members, for their clients, um, for their students. It helps people understand the financial challenges and, you know, be prepared as you're looking towards transition. Um, it helps you make informed decisions. Um, when you know what's out there, you know what's your best option. Um, you know, of course, it might be something that you need to do to support individuals. And um, also, we like to remind people that it could be something that's useful for you in the future. Um, so everyone can benefit from having this information. I, I like to tell people, and I hope my parents don't mind me sharing that I've had to educate my parents about it because, you know, my dad is now um, needing to use hearing aids. And, you know, I wanted to let them know that there are options if, you know, if they're saying, oh, we don't really want to get the most expensive option. Insurance isn't covering, you know, the $6,000 option. Well, maybe you should consider it. If you didn't, you know, plan on paying this large sum, <laughs> you might get some, some help with uh, making those payments a little bit more affordable. So we're gonna start out with um, public funding sources um, for um, post-school age. We, um, and for a person who's per, uh, pursuing education and looking to um, be in the workforce, OVR is a great option. Um, they provide devices and services needed to get or keep a job. Um, I'll talk a little bit about braiding funding and um, when I'm talking about PATF, but of course, if you know not everything is covered by one of these um, these areas, you might be able to to find other ways to assist you in affording um, your devices or equipment. The school, of course, school age for school age children, oftentimes you know the devices that are needed to access their education are provided. Um, you know, or the employer um, might be able to make that reasonable accommodation. For Medicaid, um, Medicare, and waivers, um, they are there to provide assistive technology and durable medical equipment for individuals who need intermediate supports for community living. Um, Medicare coverage focuses on in-home mobility aids, however, um, so you might need to think of other options um, outside of that. Uh, Medicaid waivers, um, such as the home and community-based supports, cover a wider range of AT. It's important to know that, um, you know, thinking about waivers before transitioning out of school um, and getting on those, those lists, those wait lists. Um, in order to be covered by insurance, equipment um, generally must be durable, um, and that just means that it's anticipated to last more than the three years. Um, must be medical, so it should primarily be used to support the management of a health condition and is not generally useful to a person who doesn't have an illness or injury. Um, and home-based, um, so it's equipment that's appropriate for use in the home setting, and oftentimes this would be equipment that's also helpful in another setting as well, other settings as well. Um, if you're looking to learn more about DME, you can follow that link. Very helpful. And once again, I'm just gonna recommend that if you are going through these avenues, um, you know, finding a way to try out devices first 
you know, either through Tech Owl and our lending library or talking to our team or your team that you already have um, in school. Um, and also, I sometimes am recommending people try out, you know, see if the, the vendor can do a demonstration of equipment, of course, and then um, potentially, you know, some, sometimes you can try it out for, you know, 30 days. I can't think of specific examples right now, but you might be able to try out a device um, you know, and see if you like it before you're, you know, before you're set on that particular device or equipment. And then there's private funding sources, and these are just a few examples. Um, um, Help Hope Live is um, a medical fundraising uh, organization for the expenses that insurance doesn't cover. Um, of course, you know, having a savings account for a person with a disability is super important. PA ABLE makes that possible. Um, it's a great start um, to be able to manage finances. Um, chances are struggles with funding AP may coincide with other financial difficulties. Um, so this is just a great consideration for individuals and families. And um, grants, you might be able to access a grant from foundations or charities. Um, just an example, Ceridian Cares, you can go on their website and take a look um, at what pops up. And um, ultimately, you can access your, um, your uh, I'm forgetting the acronym, but um, PATF is your AP Act um, program that provides funding support. So you can always access PATF with a phone call or an email. You can go on their website. Um, and they are, oh, sorry, it's right there, ASP. <laughs> and then they're also Community Development Financial Institution, institution as well, CDFI. Um, they are that for Pennsylvanians. Um, they will offer funding assistance. They have a full guide for people to look through. They educate people on waivers, um, you know, what OVR might cover, insurance, um, and then also then provide um, a very comprehensive list of grant options that those private funding sources available to Pennsylvanians and maybe just, you know, there's something even nationally that exists for your particular need. And sometimes city housing authorities, if, if you live in the housing authority, um, will provide the funding for home modification. Um, Tech Owl um, has a resource called the Del Sordo Fund. That's Virginia Del Sordo there in the picture. Um, it is a last resort um, of, for financial assistance, um, assistance through a small grant. Um, it offers reimbursement for up to $400. It is a once in a lifetime opportunity for an individual. Um, so we, we do make sure that people are trying through insurance, OVR, et cetera, before they're um, utilizing this grant opportunity. And this is also listed in the funding assistance guide for PATF as well. And that brings me to Pennsylvania Assistive Technology Foundation. Um, PATF exists to help people with disabilities and older adults acquire assistive technology devices and services. Um, they have 0% interest and low interest great options, no fees attached, um, and they offer extended repayment terms um, as compared to, you know, what's offered with vendors. Um, so it's really helpful for Pennsylvanians. So I wanted to give you some examples of um, success stories with um, the mini loan program and the low interest loan program. Um, here we have um, people who use, utilize the mini loan program for they're devices that cost between $107,000 and $7,000 um, to purchase their hearing aids, um, smart home technology, environmental controls. PATF is huge on um, educating people about smart home technology. They have a smart home um, technology resource that you can ask, um, you can request for free um, if you go on their website. Um, often, you know, these are the, the big ones that people are using, utilizing the loans for. Um, uh, you know, stair lifts are a big one as well. This is a, um, a real life example of a person who 
was able to use um, the mini loan to fund um, what he needed to access his environment. Um, so as you can see, I'm gonna read the, the example. Um, John is starting his first job and was, or it, well, he was starting his first job and was recently diagnosed with a bilateral moderate to severe hearing loss. In addition to hearing aids, his audiologist recommended a directional microphone to help with client meetings. So OVR paid for a portion of the hearing aids, but not the directional microphone. Um, John applied for a mini loan for the balance on the hearing aids, um, an extra charger for his rechargeable hearing aids and a directional mic microphone. So he was able to afford um, those, uh, those loan payments of $62.50 a month. Um, whereas when, you know, sometimes people are getting quotes for what they're gonna need and thinking how in the world am I gonna be able to pay for this. So um, we think it's really important to, to hear these stories, um, these real life examples. Um, this is a parent and child, Macy and Lindsay, um, who just didn't wanna have to wait. There's sometimes a long wait through insurance um, or even OVR. Um, during that time, you might be able to borrow equipment from us. Um, some people are doing that and it's working out wonderfully for them. Um, but some people don't want to wait and they might be able to afford, you know, a low payment in a month um, as opposed to, you know, having to, you know, budget out the cost of, a, of the full device. Um, so that's exactly what, what they were able to do to have that communication app, you know, sooner than later. And then um, the low interest rate loan um, is helping individuals in Pennsylvania, um, you know, afford their home modifications, um, uh, wheelchairs that aren't covered by insurance, um, either fully or at all. You know, um, Bob in the corner there, he's a former partner of mine, and he was able to get his device um, covered by OVR partially and then use the low interest um, loan program. Um, that share is over $30,000. Um, and that was several years ago. So now it would be much more expensive than that. Um, but it allowed him to go out to sites. We do accessibility site surveys and he was able to do that um, with the help of the loan. Very happy to share his story. And this is an example of um, a person who used PATF um, successfully and was able to basically get um, all of the vehicle modifications through OVR. Um, so this is a great example because just to know that, you know, they'll cover those modifications, but not necessarily the, the vehicle. So she was able to have the vehicle body, um, you know, apply for the loan for the vehicle body and um, get it to a, a, an affordable monthly payment, $339 a month. Tom was able to use PATF. Um, he says it was like a rubbing, rubbing the lamp, you know, um, in order to make his studio accessible to him. And, you know, whereas before he accessed PATF, he thought he was going to have to maybe have a less complex setup. Um, he was able to get everything that he needed and access his environment fully. Um, so very happy camper there as well. Um, and then of course you can braid funding. Um, I had mentioned that earlier and that's, um, you know, sometimes possible with uh, private funding sources. You might be able to have, you know, pool money from different sources and um, ultimately Alexa didn't have to take out a loan through PATF. PATF was able to help her find um, all of the funding she needed to be able to cover everything she needed in her home. Um, PATF also um, makes it their job to educate um, individuals and families about, um, you know, financial ma management and um, they do supply budgeting tools. Um, the Sense and Sensibilities correct curriculum is available online and all, they also have it available in Spanish. Um, there's an educator companion um, and slides available for teachers. Um, there's also a family companion now that 
huge and we're trying to get the word out that there are some webinars um, you know educating people about that as well and as i had mentioned able and special needs trust um, it's just so important to know that um, that these things are out there for people with disabilities to utilize um, and PATF makes it their job once again to educate individuals on this as well. Um, and this is a um, just kind of more in-depth explanation of studymoney.us, which is the website companion for Sense and Sensibility anybody can access. Um, these are all free resources. Um, it's very accessible, easy to na navigate, interactive, engaging, flexible, and it's developed with the learner and instructor in mind. Um, these are tools that were developed by um, educators, families, gave their feedback um, throughout the development of, of these tools, um, and financial um, professionals as well. So if you wanted any, to learn more about any of these resources, go ahead and um, utilize those QR codes. Um, once again, you can do that when you get the slides as well. And as I had mentioned, I'm not going to go into depth with it here, but there is the smart home um, guide as well that just takes people through, you know, what to consider when thinking about environmental controls um, for accessing their environment. Just um, information on PATF and how to go about um, contacting them directly. You can also contact me and I'll provide some information and also um, help you get connected with PATF. So um, tech out programs and services, I'm gonna go through these slides pretty quickly. Um, and hopefully if you have any questions, we can go over those at the end. The Assistive Technology Lending Library um, is a, um, a service that allows people to take out five to nine weeks um, week loans. Um, the devices are shipped right to your door um, and it's very easy to become a user of the library. Um, you just need to make sure to have an email address tied to your account. Um, any given email address can only be tied to one account on the um, the library website, just to keep in mind for people who are working with individuals um, with, with, you know, the AP needs. Um, free for Pennsylvanians. Um, we also um, can come out and support users if they um, need support through their loan period. Um, we receive the shipping notice and are in touch with people throughout their loan period um, to help them out. And then the shipping label is included too, so it's easy to return um, to, to coordinate UPS pickup and return it. If there's an item that we don't have, we're always looking for to add new items to the library. So if you can think of a device that you want to try out that's not available currently, go ahead and suggest a new library item. Um, just an example of you know a great device that's very popular the amazon echo show um and it's very accommodating to people with um with all types of needs um hearing vision loss um it has the captioning screen reader magnification color inversion or color corrector even um you know it helps with companionship for individuals who um might still be you know, um, isolated in their environment. Um, and it's a centralized hub for other smart home devices that you might want to try out. So we encourage people to try that out and take out other devices as well to add to the system. Um, there's a daily living kit available at the library. Um, it has these items that are pictured here, a jumbo ball pen, point pen, spring open, Pill organizers, um, which are really awesome, um, pocket dresser, sock assist and zipper pulls, anti-slip doorknob covers, grip roll and foam grip tubes, bottle, can and jar openers, um, and I, fold, I don't know what that is, folding <laughs> reacher or grabber tool. Um, I'll have to fix that slide. But um, yeah, it's just an example of, you know, some low light tech tools that people can try out. 
in the library. Um, and then there, we do have a used equipment program. Um, our inventory is at our office in Allentown on 13th Street. Um, we have various mobility devices, um, other uh, durable medical equipment, including bathroom assistance equipment. Um, and we have assorted, assorted assistive technology. Um, last year, I gave out a few computers um, that, that students, you know, people who were accessing, you know, school needed um, and were, you know, couldn't wait for OVR, you know, to provide, you know, what they needed. So we were able to give those out. Um, sometimes we have phone, phone equipment, smartphones, um, so it never hurts to, to call us and ask if we have something that, um, right now we do have, an, oh, what's it called? we do have an, an AAC device, a very complex one. Um, I can't think off the top of my head right now what we have, but it's um, in our reused equipment exchange program, no income requirement. It, we just ask that people sign a release and it's theirs to keep. Um, TechOwl offers 3D printed tools. Um, here you have um, various, you know, options that they um, have on a list on the website, the maker catalog, um, but you can always request other tools. They're always looking for new ideas um, to add to the tools that they already have. Um, they can basically print anything um, that you can think of that's, that's printable. We do have a free special phones program for people with disabilities, all ages, um, well, six years and older. Um, the person does have to meet the 200% of the federal poverty limit level uh, guideline. Um, but we do have amplified phones. We have captioned phones. Um, we have at all times uh, an iOS device, an iOS phone, so an Apple phone. Um, and two Androids. We have Google Pixel and Samsung Galaxy. We're often updating them to, to make sure that there is a newer model that has all of the newest accessibility features. We will do demonstrations of our equipment um, and help people make those decisions as well. There is a free tablet program through um, Temple. It, it can be a wait for all of these things. Um, it could be a month or so wait for a device. Um, um, but if you have any questions, you can always reach out and um, ask. This kind of opened up um, devices to people, not just with disabilities, but other demographics as well that were struggling to have, you know, the smart device needed to access telehealth and social isolation during the pandemic. But we decided to keep it in place, so it's there to stay. We offer consults and demonstrations through our regional center and we're often connecting with the main office. Um, they have, um, they do have an SLP, they have an AAC expert um, on hand for us. Um, so we all kind of work together um, with my special education background. We kind of like, you know, we all have different strengths that we, <laughs> we um, that come together to help to support um, teams making decisions. Um, they do have emergency preparedness schools. We do recommend that, um, especially during transitions, people are uh, prepared to, you know, have all of the different equipment needed and, and have those checklists um, checked out. So you can download templates on their website to be prepared. There is an annual adapted toy drive. Um, I just wanted to make sure to get that out to you. Um, if you're interested, you can always reach out to me and I can let you know more about that. And that is a wrap. Um, I do re uh, request that you take the survey. Um, there's a QR code here for you to use. And um, I'll just keep this slide up a little bit longer and then um, for sure you can start um, typing in questions. And I see some already. Thank you so much for that wonderful formative webinar. Um, definitely some good information.